Greetings and welcome to another round of four words or phrases. I've done this once before. This is just a chance to do a little extemporaneous speaking about subjects I have no idea of what's coming up. So the next four slides came from Craig. He sent me these slides. I have not looked at them. So what you're hearing right now is me responding to these in the for the very first time. So without any further ado, let's walk through them. Oh, the dark times. And when I think of this, I always think of the last phase of a project. Everybody's running around like crazy, trying to get everything tied up, getting ready to possibly to put software in production or put new processes in place. And it's that time where everything you thought was good to go, you suddenly find out, oh man, there's four or five things that no one ever really thought of. And in those times, it can be really difficult, especially in project life, to be able to step back and go, hey, we all deal with this. The point here is to remember, once you've got everything resolved, to go ahead and figure out ways to, next time, think about these things further in advance. So that's why it's really great to have uh, retrospectives after projects or after cycles to say, what really worked well, what didn't, and how do we go about improving those in the future? Master Apprentice. This is an interesting concept. So I'm going to tweak this a little bit because I'm going to talk about something that I'm doing with my teams at work at the moment. My company, we, we generally have two types of people. We have people that really know the business well and have come up through the ranks and have been in the company starting at the lowest levels. And they work themselves up and slowly acquire the skills to perform higher and higher level tasks. And then we have people that we bring in from the outside, which are specialists. And these specialists come in with specific skills. They may not know anything about our business, but man, they know development, they know project management, they know business analysis, and they're masters at what they do. So what I love to do is do a paired approach, where I take somebody who knows the business well and the organization well, and someone who has specific sets of skills that we need, and put them together. One of the things that I've found is when you do this and you have two groups like this together, they can work and play off of each other very, very well. It's a great way for both sides to learn. So in this situation, in some things, they're each acting like the master, and in some, they're both acting like the apprentice. Not only do you help each other learn about the projects you're doing, you help grow each other's skills as well. It's a great concept, and I really love doing it, and it's worked well for me. How to start the change. The first thing you really have to do is recognize you need one. Once you have that understanding of change, you have to ask yourself, is the organization ready for this change? It may be something that's desperately needed, but you know what? If your organization can't handle it, there's no point in even trying that. You're going to fail. You're going to make people mad. The idea might be to say, well, if the, we need the big change, but maybe there's a smaller change that the organization can accept to maybe prepare them for the bigger change. It's all about planning. It's all about understanding what are the things that the business can withstand right now. So once you figure that out, that's when you start building consensus. You start working with your business units to say, hey guys, here's something I think we really need to do. Can we all get behind this? And you spend that time up front to make sure that everybody is on board, everybody's in agreement, and everyone is willing to go in the right same direction. Quality requirements. Man, this is hard. I think it's hard a lot because we don't really understand what quality is. Uh, in a lot of interviews we've been doing recently at work for some temporary positions, I've been in the quality assurance area. And it's amazing, you would think, that interviewing people who have specific skills for quality assurance, who say they have five years or more experience, can't really answer the question of what quality is. That's disheartening in a way. I don't know that I have the best answers for what quality is myself, but to not even have been able to give a good, hard th thought about what the answer is, that's the problem I run into. Nobody really understands what it is to be quality. Uh, lots of people say things like, well, there's no defects. Well, yeah, but not having no defects doesn't mean that, that what was developed will actually work for the business. It may be developed completely correctly, but if you develop the wrong thing, it's still not quality. I think what it comes down to is need. And if your requirements are meeting the needs of your stakeholders, 
and that you're doing them in a way that don't cause the actual users to revolt, hopefully you are making them happy, then I think you do get quality. Now there's a lot more to it than that, but at a high level that's what I feel. So that was our four words or phrases. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed doing it. Talk to you later. Till next time. Bye-bye.